Do you use that in civilian life? Like, do you still employ the, I'm going to attack it, I'm going to take their souls? Like, how does that play out in a non-combat um, zone? It still works for me in, in life as far as attacking things because uh, no matter what I want to, you know, no matter what avenue I choose, I want to be the very best. Mm. And the very best may not be I'm number one. The very best is did I leave everything inside of me out there? So attacking is not like, oh, I want to win this or win that or be the best. The best is I'm, I'm, I'm running against myself and everything I do. And, and, that's, and that's what I attack. I attack myself. I'm always questioning myself. I'm always holding myself accountable. Talk to me about the accountability mirror. So the accountability mirror is something that I kind of came up with in high school. Like I said, I started shaving my head when I was 16. Mm. And I got caught up in trying to impress so many people because no one liked me. So I developed so many different identities. Let me sag my pants. You know, let me, okay, let me pull my pants up. Let me, let me talk this way or act this way or be this way or, or whatever the hell it may be. God, dog, so many different things I did to try to fit in with so many different groups that when you look in the mirror, that's the one person you can't lie to. So every morning I would shave my head thinking, God, I would reflect back on some of the lies I may have told somebody or some of the ways I acted that I didn't feel comfortable doing. And I did it to impress other normal people. The key word there is normal, everyday people. I was trying to make other people like me. How pathetic is that? So I, th this mirror would always tell me, my, 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 my reflection would say, God, you are a pathetic man. How does that feel every day to be this way? So I would just start having myself accountable. How, how did I attack today? How did I attack yesterday? And if I didn't do something I was proud of, I'd write down a sticky note. And I would fix it. So then my senior year in high school, it was a totally different David Goggins. Can you give an example of something that you wrote down and fixed? All right, there was a lunch table. That I, you know, I wanted to sit the cool guy lunch table, man. I wanted, you know, even though everybody was calling me a nigger all the time, I wanted to, to try to act like somebody I wasn't so I could fit in. And I sold my soul to the devil, you know, trying to act like, no, I'm, I'm David fucking Goggins. That's who I am. And so I wrote down on a piece of paper, fuck the table. Sit by your fucking self. And that's what I did. And guess what happened? My table became a table people started sitting at. Because a whole bunch of people in that lunchroom felt exactly like I did. I, I, I had a laundry list of things that I just, I, I, I write down in this fix. So I write it down and fix it. Were there things that you looked to for... Um role models, people that you were like taking ideas from, like why pull your pants up? If that's the popular style, like what was giving, either you were the single most insightful person I've ever met, which by the way is entirely possible having listened to enough of your material, or like you had a treasure trove of people that gave you great ideas. Even if they were like fictional or movie or, you know, athletes or whatever, but. It was funny, man. One, one movie I watched all the time was Rocky. Great choice. Rocky won. And I related to Rocky a lot because of uh, kind of, you know, I'm one of the smart guy, just tried real hard. And the one scene that I related a lot of my life to, still to this day, was Rocky won round 14. And this is where I got taken souls from. If you look at round 14 of Rocky won, Apollo is beating the shit out of Rocky. Rocky falls down in his corner. Mickey's saying, stay down, stay down. Rocky didn't hear a fucking soul. Apollo, after he knocked him down, turns around, hands in the air, like I finally knocked down this animal. Right. Apollo doesn't know it, but Rocky is getting up. Apollo turns around the second Rocky gets up. And Apollo looks at Rocky, and he, Apollo looks at him with a look of like Rocky just took his soul. He, he, Apollo shakes his head and Rocky has his gloves and emotions towards Apollo. Come on, motherfucker, I'm still here. And this song comes on that I played. So when I brought the, Gimp the um, Ginsburg Rolls records, it took me 17 hours to do 4,030 pull-ups. I listened to one song <laughs> for 17 hours. Two minutes and 17 seconds. Dun, 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 dun. 
I listened to that song for 17 hours wow. nonstop on, on repeat. So the image in my mind of a man was not one that had earrings, sagged his pants. I, I, I had this image in my head, and I was going to fulfill that. And I, I didn't do any trends. I stopped trending. I stopped being this guy who whatever was new, fuck it. That's not what I believe in. I'm doing this. This is what I want to be. This is what I'm going to be. So. It's incredible. Um, how do you experience beauty and joy in your life? What situations do you put yourself in? What makes you laugh? What, uh, what's the fun stuff for you? It's funny you say that. Um, I, I just retired from the military in November 2015. And I was going and going and going and going. And I never really, I was a, a happy guy, but I'm never in the moment of like sitting back and I want to travel here to have fun or do this or that. Mm. I've never been that person. But the first time I really got a chance to experience true happiness and true peace was I was like, so what I did to myself to become who I am today, it takes a great toll on your body. So I believe God gave me time to rest and he took me out of commission. Not even the mind of Goggins could get me back up. So I had about a good six, seven months where I was out. And when I was out, I had time to reflect on all I'd accomplished. Mm. And that was the first time in my life where I sat back and said, wow. Because only I, I may be telling you some of the story, I know the exact truth of how brutal my life was and how I shouldn't be on this show today and how the mind and how beautiful it is. So what brings me joy and happiness is knowing how beautiful the mind is and I'm one of the few people that didn't read about it, didn't experience it through some, some drug. I got to experience the beauty of true fucking willpower. True fuck you. I'm going to fail. I'm going to fucking fail. I'm going to fucking fail. I'm going to fucking fail. And I will succeed. Just me talking about that gives me a feeling I know what I did. And I don't need to travel somewhere or to have this or have that. I have it all here in my mind. The beauty is remembering this young, dumb, what people call nigger, is now where I'm at today. And that is, when you finally get to that point for me, it's forever lasting peace. I, do need, I, I could die right now on this show, and I'll be happy, ma'am. So... That's, that's my happiness is, is, is my reflection on the suffering of my journey, knowing I never quit, nor was I guided by anybody on this earth. I was guided by something much more powerful, and I listened, mm. and I chose the path of most resistance. Talent not required. I love that. You've said that you lived the life of a monk. Mm -hmm. what, is, what does that mean? What does that look like? Why do you do that? Um, so I stretch out every day for at least two hours. I don't drink. I don't go out. My regimen is I wake up, have oatmeal, run, come back, hit the weights. Um, I'm a big sports guy. I don't leave the house if at all but to do stuff like this. And I stretch out at nighttime. I find people that I trust, which is a very small group of people, people who are honest and true to me, people who will die for me, and I'll die for them, which is a fucking small sure. and everybody else man you know do you and I stay to myself and I let you do you I don't judge people I don't criticize you you want to be a douchebag and be an ass and not love this country do you ever want to do I don't care man I fought for this country for you to do you and I am all about you doing you because I'm going to fucking do me and I'm going to do me until I'm fucking dead and I believe I, I earned the right a lot of people haven't earned the right. Just because you live in this country, I mean, you earn the right. You got you to gotta live a little bit. Live. And then have something to say or shut the fuck up, you know? So if you had, this may be impossible to answer, but if you had um, that same kid from earlier, he wants to take that first step, you want him to go experience some life, what one specific thing would you tell him to go do? 
I would first ask the kid, who are you? At the core of your soul. And if he can, can't answer that question, our conversation's over. Because I can't say shit to him. Right. If you don't know who you are, if you don't know who you are, I can't tell you who you are. What's the next phase of your life look like? I, I, you can't imagine how intrigued I am to watch you over the next five to 10 years. Well, honestly, I've, I'm blessed enough to have survived the life I lived mm. and to come out the other side with a bunch of knowledge. So hopefully I can help people that believe that they're much less than what they truly are. Help them find greatness in themselves. And greatness isn't running 200 miles at a time or doing 4,000 pull-ups or being a SEAL. Mm. Greatness is whatever the hell you dreamed of in your own mind. You got to first see it. You got to first create this vision in your mind. And then that's when I come into play. Once you create this vision in your mind, it's how am I going to get there now? And that's when I come into play. But first, you got to create your own vision. And then it's not external. It's the, the vision that created is inside of you. So until you create that, I'm, I'm, I'm nobody to you. Are you writing a book? I'm slowly writing a book right now. It's taking me four or five years because I have so many things to talk about. It's, it's, it's going to be several, probably several books. But um, the first book will probably be about my life story, how I came up, and um, a few lessons learned along the way. But, you know, I have so much to talk about, so much to say, just, just to give people a lot more than hope. Right. So... All right. Before my last question, where can these guys find you online? DavidGoggins.com. You know, um, Instagram <laughs> is David Goggins or Facebook's David Goggins at David Goggins. You know, you'll find me. Go on there. Look for David Goggins. Google me. They will find you. <laughs> There's so much amazing stuff on you. All right. So last question. What is the impact that you want to have on the world? The impact I want to have on the world is it's a great question, man, and it's a question that I've been asking many times, and I have several answers for it. But the biggest one is we're all, we, we are all great. No matter if, if you think you're dumb, no matter if you think you're fat, no matter if you are fat, no matter if you've been bullied, or no matter if you just got back from Iraq or Afghanistan and you have no legs or your arms or whatever, man, we all have greatness. It just, you gotta find the courage you got to find the courage to put your Bose headphones on and silence the noise out of this world and to find it and to find it because it's out there. But it's going to take hard work, courage, self-discipline. It's going to take all the non-cognitive skills, the, all the non-cognitive skills to be great. You know, smart is good. All this stuff is good. That's all cognitive. It's the non-cognitive skills that sets you apart from everybody else. And, and that's what it's all about.